Came on Green Show. Right after the game in the Kings locker room, I said, I love you, bro. It's like, I love you too. We ain't done. You right. Got it. Noted. Cool. We ain't. You right. So to think that, like, we've done these things, I love it. And we're not done. I wish that everyone... Why do you keep playing that? Because it is he's just, he's just so trying to piss amazing. Me off. <laughs> You're right. We're well, not. Here's the thing. Noted. There are a lot of people with you. And I wish every one of you to be on Twitch and YouTube right now. Throw up. I wish every one of you to be on Twitch and YouTube right now to see what happens to Dib's face when I play this cut. Here it comes again. Tell right him. after the game. In the Kings locker room, I said, I love you, bro. It's like, I love you too. We ain't done. You right. Got it. Noted. Cool. We ain't. You right. So to think that, like, we've done these things, I love it. And we're not done. All the man is doing is talking. And I know there are thousands of people out there just like you right now, Dib. They can't, like, your whole body tenses up. Got it. Do you, it. You're Noted. Sh your sheepish grin, your shaking head, you are completely uncomfortable Listening to Draymond Green speak about anything that is positive and looking forward. Why? Because he's full of it. And he's talking about what they have done. And I love what they have done. And he's an unbelievable player. He's a Hall of Famer. No one will ever wear 23 again with the Golden State Warriors. But the idea of uh, we're not done. Well, you're not done what? Getting ejected? Throwing punches, choking opponents, getting ill-timed tees, uh, punching teammates. Noted. Yeah. What are we? What are we not done with? I won't say triggered because you use the word activated, but that's my point. Steve Kerr came on this show three days ago and essentially said, "Watch your fork." Sorry. Essentially said, "Hey, Dub Nation, you better thank Draymond Green." That's zero championships without him. I thank him. No, but you don't. No, I do. No, but, but you no, don't. I do, and we're I, talking I, about going forward. I understand that, but I will forever be fascinated by this dynamic that we're talking about because it is intense and all over the place. You are not alone. Dib, look at me. You are not alone. I know I'm not You're alone. You're not alone. I'm telling you, man, it's so fascinating to me how many people have such pronounced sides of their mouth to where they can use both of them to go, Draymond, you're a legend. Draymond, we love you. Draymond, thank you for the championships. But you've also reached a point where you cannot even listen to him talk without your whole body becoming a complete ball of tension and anger and wanting him gone, yet also in the same breath, acknowledging that the Warriors could not, like, so much of the Warrior fan base, the love-hate relationship with Draymond is so intense that I, I I don't know what you do with it. Well, it's unlike any relationship ever in the history of Bay Area sports. And, you know, I'm going to ask you how, how you feel about Aubrey Huff. Because um, Aubrey Huff is a World Series champ. Yeah. And what Aubrey Huff did for the 2010 team was significant. I don't. I don't and feel. Yet, I don't feel any anything good about Aubrey Huff. Exactly. Exactly. No, no, but like even looking back, it's like sure. You look back, and I'm not going to give back not, at the baseball player. But I'm not going to give back the championship. There's no of way course. to do that anyway. But, but I, don't, I think you'd be disingenuous if you didn't look back at his on-field contributions and at least acknowledge that. They okay. were good and meaningful, and they led to a championship. Yeah, but they're, they're, those are less important to me than somebody who, who is bad to other people. Dray, Draymond Green might, well, but you know what I mean? mean he's, he's, Draymond not, Green, he's not necessarily good to all people. I, Ask Jordan Poole if I'm, he's good to Jordan Poole. Fair enough, but I'm going to put, put those on two very, very different planes. They are different, yeah. but I, I'm trying hate, to... Hate speech and somebody who is a little emotionally off his rocker in a basketball game... Two two very different things to me. I'm just putting it in the context of people who you have rooted for and people who you you know saw win a championship for your favorite team, and now you you can feel differently about them for whatever reason you want. Uh, you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Oh. 
Oh, oh, see, I thought that's what you were setting up for, but I surprised you, Grandy. Come on. Ah, I love that sound. Yeah, because it's yeah. Friday, and it is 5 o'clock, and the 5 o'clock pop is brought to you by Farmers Brewing Company. Whatever time it is, wherever you are, join us as we get ready for this sports weekend, which features playoff basketball <clears throat> and no Warriors. Uh, we are going to be sipping on their premium light lager called Farmer's Light. I wonder where it got its name. Just 99 calories per 12 fluid ounces. Go grab a six-pack from Farmer's Brewing at your nearest grocery store and enjoy the game with us and mm, the beer uh, right here on 95.7 The Game. Playoffs tomorrow, 10 a.m. Magic and Cavs, will you get up and put that baby straight on? Uh, I'm, Where I'm, are you with the NBA playoffs knowing the Warriors aren't in it? Yeah, li- literally in a little bit of a moment. It's only a moment. I'll get back to it, but like, I don't want to watch the Kings and Pelicans tonight. No. I don't want to watch it. Who are you rooting for, though? Uh, do you want to see the, the, the little Beamers make yeah, it in? I, I, I kind of do. Like, I, I, I'm so... I am am I poke at the Sacramento Kings fan base so much that people will not believe this. If if the Warriors didn't exist, that's who I'd root for. I'd like I love Sacramento. I love De'Aaron Fox. Sabonis is completely annoying, but outside of that, Mike Brown, like a lot of the things about the Kings, I love. Golden One Center's a ton of fun. We've gone up there to see games and shows, and like I got absolutely no, other than Sabonis. Nothing bothers me about the Sacramento Kings. And um, so, yeah, I hope they win. And and with Zion out, maybe they will. There's another, uh, just getting back to Draymond Green, yeah. there's another person who probably would not say uh, Draymond's necessarily the greatest guy. Sabonis, who got uh, outwardly stomped on by Draymond Yeah, last but Sabonis year. is an instigator, too. He's a, he's a complete, like, he's completely. Not on the same level as Draymond Green. No, but he's completely out of pocket on the court. He, like... He thinks that the other person is wrong all the time. That's, That's the, a large majority of players in the association. Uh, I think it's the it maybe a majority of the of the stars that we we talk about, but I don't feel like the the energy around that is not the same for every player. There's only a few who really it feels like you're really unnecessarily complaining and your facial expressions are in the wrong on almost every play. There's Luca, there's there's Sabonis, Draymond. No, I don't feel that oh, way. Wow, I just feel wow. when he argues, he argues too much. I don't think he argues on every single play at all. I don't feel that way. Okay, I mean, yeah. I I feel, uh, and that's one reason why uh, watching Draymond Green play basketball is, is tough for me. That's and you know, fair. you, you yeah, use the word fine. triggering, and for me, it's more of an activation when you watch him play, and it's even plays that he's not involved in. Where he he gets involved with the officials, and that you know maybe it's because I'm an official on my own little low pathetic level, but watching how much he gets involved in everything, it's not something I enjoy watching. Oh, there's no, I, I mean, you I rushed, can't, got it. No, yeah. I can't argue Noted, that. Yeah. I can't argue that that Dr- Draymond rubs a lot of people a certain way. That's that's always been the case, but I just th- I, sometimes I wonder why fans don't take or not all of them. Some fans don't take what the Warriors front office says about Draymond at face value. Like, the Warriors front office's job is not to be likable. Right, Their job is to win. And so when they look at Draymond Green, for them, it's an easy answer. Are we better with him or without him? Well, with him. Done. Great. Then he's on. Right. But a lot Even of, when his actions are uh, unforgivable. Uh, right. And then, and then they become forgivable. And then, and, and then you forgive him. Right. Exactly. So I get that some fans have reached the point where you're like, I don't care if we're worse if, if, if he's gone. I want him gone. But I also think there's a handful of fans, a good percentage of the fan base that has fooled themselves into thinking that the Warriors could replace him and still be just as good. And I think that's... A fool's errand. Well, I don't know about the idea of just as good because for me, you're not that good. And you can hide behind 46 and 36 if you want. I look at the way they played 
this year against the really good teams, and you didn't do well against the really good teams. So we can say, would they be any good with Draymond or any good without Draymond? I don't think that it's going to matter. I don't think that if Draymond's back or Draymond gets traded, I don't think that you're going to be appreciably better or worse either way. You're still going to be, in my opinion, in the middle of the pack in the Western Conference. You're going to be fighting for that six or seven or eight seed like you were this year. Evan had a great uh, stat earlier with Guru that they spent more time in the 12th seed than they did in the eight seed this year yeah. in in the Western Conference. And I so mean, and I, if you can look at whatever reason you want to look at, but even when Draymond played, you weren't appreciably a great team. You were a little bit better when Draymond played. Oh. And so if you have Draymond or you don't have Draymond, I still don't think you're going to be a real threat in the Western Conference. You, I mean, you you talked about the record with and without him. They are they are clearly a better team with him. Right, clearly. right. And we could look at the opponents yeah. that they played when sure. he played, and, you know, we can split hairs all the way through. Um, let's go to Cliff and Vallejo. Hey, Cliff, what are you doing? What's going on, guys? What's happening with you, man? What's Top good? Cliff, hey. Hey, man, what's going on, man? The, the main thing going on is this, it's 420 weekend. That's the, that's the main point right there. So you're going to have brother. a day tomorrow, huh? Yeah, put and you the, know that Cliff put, rhymes put, with Spliff, put am plant, I right? Put yeah. The plant, put, put the plants in the ground, that's all I can tell you. And October is coming, baby. You yeah. know what time it is. Oh, yeah, that's harvest season. Like that. Let's go. Yeah, October. So Dibs, smokes, kush. <laughs> Man, <laughs> talk to him, Spliffy. You're crazy. Hey, but what's going on? Yeah, man, the rat on the table is, so ever since that punch, the Warriors have not been the same team. Man. And that's just the way it is. I'm going to put it to you like this, bro. If I was on the team, if you was on your high school team, and your whole player attacked one of your other players, whether he was good or bad or whatever he was, would you want to play with that guy again? And that's why I think where Wigan is coming from with all this time that he took off and all of that, he didn't want to play with Draymond Green. No well, more. no, come on, Cliff. That's not why Andrew Wiggins was out. Can you imagine if that's why a Cliff, I, I can't argue that that, that, that act uh, didn't change the course of some things. It, 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 it almost certainly did. And, and we've also, God, we've talked that thing out a thousand different ways for a thousand hours. So I, I think it's time we move on from that. But when you get to the point of, of saying that that is still in the locker room this year and that certain players are, are making decisions because they don't want to be around Draymond Green, if Andrew Wiggins were doing that, they, they would have kicked his butt to the curb a long time ago. Look at Wiggins' number pre-punch versus his numbers post-punch. He has not been the same player. Stop it. He it's was the same clearly player, emotionally the same affected. player last year that he was every other year except for two months when they won the title. Exact same player. Emotional ramifications. Well, then you're weak. Well, if you can't play because you don't like a coworker, that's I got a word for that. It's called unprofessional. Well, there's other words that could be used, but uh, I mean, damn right. Here bottom is. line, you look at this off season. And I don't know if you, whatever you do with Clay Thompson, fine. Steph's back and Draymond's back. I can't imagine if they bring back Andrew Wiggins that the veterans are going to be that open to another year of playing with Andrew Wiggins and suffering through his inconsistency.